biggest question the Lakers have to answer this offseason. Who are the pieces that you're going to surround LeBron James, AD, and Russell Westbrook with that can defensively take on a huge load and also provide shooting? I, I do like the thoughts of a P.J. Tucker that can kind of provide both. I think that's something that you could potentially see go down for the Lakers, but those ancillary pieces are critical. It brings that toughness, too, that uh, sometimes you felt like this team could use. And then, obviously, the really big one right across the river behind us in Brooklyn. Is Kyrie Irving going to opt out of his deal when, with the Nets? I think when it's all said and done, Greeny, these two are going to play together. They look at each other as equals. It is both of their team. And with KD and Kyrie, with Joe Harris, with Ben Simmons coming back, there's going to be, need to be a line drawn in the sand at the end of the day, and the Nets organization is going to need to recognize that. If KD wants Kyrie to be a part of this championship team, then inevitably he will be a part of the team. So, so that's the interesting piece here. And I want to bring Wendy back. And, and I got, oh, Chene Agumake has gotten up with us early this morning as well. Chene, thank you, as always, We're here for the draft and, and tons to do. But, Jay, I'll, I'll come back to you on that quickly because <clears throat> you say they see each other, and I apologize for the voice. They see each other as equals. That's all well and good. But as of this moment, they don't get to make all the decisions here, right? The Nets have to be willing to give Kyrie the Supermax or run the risk that he will decide he has better options. Are they willing to give him what he wants beyond just him opting in for one more year? Well, like I said, and then the conversation becomes different. If you're not willing to give him that, then you have to be willing to part ways with Kevin Durant. And the question is if the Brooklyn Nets want to go back to a rebuild. And right now they're so close to winning a championship. Do you just take your do you take your lumps and do you say for the next two years if this is our window then we're gonna we're gonna be all in with Katie and Kyrie? I understand why you say that, and I, I bring Chene in on this. They did get swept in the first round of the playoffs last year, but I understand in theory they would have Ben Simmons. In theory they will have a, a, a full year of all these guys together. So and, and Vegas does agree with you that they are that close to a championship. Chene, how do you see it? If you're making the decisions in Brooklyn right now, how are you playing it with Kyrie and I guess KD along the way? as well. I would hope for a short-term deal for Kyrie Irving based on how the last few years have played out. And there has to be a little realism knowing that this is the push to win a championship in the short term. But, you know, I'm a player as well. And so I know I personally would push for a long-term deal. But the best case scenario for the Brooklyn Nets is to see how this big three plays. And let's be real. This is a big three that has the potential to be the best in the East. You've got the best scorer that's a seven-footer in Kevin Durant. You've got Ben Simmons, probably the most versatile defender in the NBA. He needs a defensive player of the year if he's locked in. And then you've got Kyrie Irving, the most clutch performer, possibly, you know, of the last few years as a guard, undersized guard. And so I would hope to see this on the floor for one year before you have that decision to potentially part ways with Kyrie and KD. So, Wendy, you and I were talking this morning before the show. The deadline for Kyrie to opt in to the final year of his deal is June 29th. If, if he were to really want to make this thing interesting, what might he do? There's a very, very exclusive restaurant in Los Angeles, Greeny. It's a rooftop restaurant in Brentwood, and it's at LeBron James' house. <laughs> and last summer, when DeMar DeRozan and Damian Lillard and eventually Russell Westbrook met with LeBron as they were con the Lakers were considering their big move, the move was to come and meet with LeBron at his rooftop, which sometimes makes its way into social media. The Nets feel, obviously, some level of comfort about their position. But there is a concern in Brooklyn that Kyrie, because he's not a conventional thinker, Kyrie could be, you know, inventive enough to leave the money on the table to go play with the Lakers and reunite with LeBron. But... He would really have to rattle the saber there. And so I think it would take something, some sort of story or photo or some sort of leak that would ratchet up the pressure on Brooklyn. Because at the end of the day, Kyrie knows that the Nets have caved to him before. He has stared them down and gotten what he's wanted before. The Nets are attempting to reset that scenario because they feel they've got leverage in this situation by getting a contract that they want. Kyrie now has to grapple with that. So the real concern, he's not going to go play in Milwaukee for the mid, for the mid level. He's, I don't even know if he'd go play in New York for the mid level, but going to play with LeBron and the Lakers for the mid level, you can't rule that out. So he'd have to 
twist that possibility to make the Nets sweat, and that would take some sort of action to, you know, create that, um, that feeling. Oh, I love it. And Cheney, I could tell you loved it as well. What if next week we got a picture of LeBron and Kyrie drinking red wine on LeBron's roof oh in Brentwood? God. Now what? <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't, like, make this up. But the crazy thing is this is kind of titillating. As someone that currently plays for a Los Angeles sports team, <laughs> like, literally, I played two days ago for the Sparks. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that actually seems, you know, they might be desperate enough to say that this is a piece that could actually work for us, meaning they really need that guard leadership. They need someone that, you know, doesn't put mileage on LeBron. They need someone that can score, you know, from the one-two position. This is something that I think the Lakers fandom would actually might want to run it back. And more so basketball fans, aren't we nostalgic? We love the ideas of, you know, people reuniting after going away for some time saying, hey, bro, hey, bro, I know we saw, we didn't see eye to eye, but finally we're back here together and we can try to make this fairy tale ending of winning a championship in one of the most storied franchises ever. That's the part that, yeah, that will make the Brooklyn Nets sweat because at the end of the day, as basketball fans, these are things that we love to see, even can, though the can, likelihood of that is a little sus. Can Why I, do you can, look can, so skeptical? Well, no, I'm not skeptical because I, I think this is all a great scheme. See, because you guys act like players aren't on the same page about them getting the most money. Uh -huh. So if I'm Katie, if I'm Kyrie, I'm like, if, if I do want to play into the whole Brian Winner sanction there, right, I'm saying, okay, cool. KD, look, this is how this is going to go. I'm going to go out to L.A. I'm going to have a picture with LeBron. I'm having red wine. I'm going to get the deal because everybody in the world knows that KD is one of the most competitive dudes on the planet. Can you imagine the size of the knife that you would take out of KD's back mm. if Kyrie would go to L.A. to play with LeBron James would be sizable. Like, it would blow up everything. Right. So if you're going to do that, play it the right way, get your money, all for them to be back in Brooklyn where it all began in the first place. Because it, it, trust me, at the end of the day, KD wants Kyrie to be happy. If Kyrie is happy, that means he's bought in. If Kyrie's not happy, that means he could be volatile. If there's anything, you don't want more volatility on a team that is so close to getting over the hump. I love you don't want it. I love everything you play about the system. Them. Wendy, put a ribbon on We have more on this as we go, but for the moment, put a ribbon on it for me, Wendy. Go. I would almost tell you in the history of the NBA that I can't think of another player who would legitimately leave $30 million on the table and leave Kevin Durant to go to Los Angeles. But Kyrie Irving is one of the most unpredictable and unexplainable players. And that wild card creates uncertainty here. Otherwise, this is an academic situation. But with Kyrie, it's never academic. All right. Everyone stay where you are. KJM across the hall, ESPN Radio every morning. You're the man. Thank you very much. i got to get to the controversy from last night. If you're just joining us, a Game 4 Stanley Cup final, it ends in controversy, enormous controversy, this is the game-winning goal by Kadri in the overtime. It gives the Avalanche a 3-2 win. It gives them a 3-1 lead in the series. But it clearly comes with an extra man on the ice. And after the game was over, the Tampa Bay coach was clearly frustrated.